I don't know, rock and roll, soft rock, hard rock, I don't know, punk rock, I don't know. The most ghetto kid on DGK? Oh man, they all got their little variety of ghetto-ness. I'll say right now, probably Lenny Rivas. He still lives in the craziest Mexican hood in um, San Diego, National City. I don't even think black people are allowed in his neighborhood. It's that crazy. He still keep it hood, yeah. Yeah, all the way hood. I would say Wade, Wade DeSarmo, yeah. He's from Canada. Everybody nice from Canada. You can't be hood and be from Canada, so he's not ghetto. He's tough, though. He's a hockey player. You know, they all nice up there in Canada. They're a nice type of tough. Nice ghetto. Ain't none of them. <laughs> Maybe Andy Roy. Oh no, Frank. He's hood. He got some. He got some rebelness in him. I got a lot of respect for him. All them dudes, I got a lot of respect for. Him. They still crazy. Though. I skated a lot. What the thing which you would not want to do is not know anybody. That was like the one thing you would not want to do. You would want to come and call somebody and let them know you was coming. Cause you know, Love Park wasn't just skaters. It was homeless people there too. So depending on what time you came there and what type of equipment he was pulling out, you know, that thing could be gone <laughs> fast, <laughs> like real fast. A lot of Saturdays, whoever came before like 12, 12.30, like I was always hear such and such camera got stolen, such and such camera got stolen, where we had to link up with the homeless dudes to say, look, stop stealing all of the cameras, like let us rock, like if you're gonna take some cameras, make sure like you don't just take it all of the cameras because we need that to put the city on the map we had to like gain respect from the homeless dudes that take bartering so we had to like pay them we had to get them food and it kind of became more of a brotherhood but for a while people was getting everything snatched from skateboards cameras backpacks like everything so that's why they had to call pretty much us or like a ricky oyola and had to come there with us so the homeless dudes would know okay they with them or they with them Anybody else left dangling, it was like, hey, we don't know. Yeah. Fred Gall is the reason why I'm, I was I got sponsored. Fred Gall brought Jeff Pang to Philadelphia. So I ran up to Jeff Pang. I was like, I'm trying to get sponsored. You know, I'm good. He was like, oh, you good? Well, let me film you. And I did the line, and that line that he filmed me wound up being in my element part. Somehow, like, people was vouching for me. Jeff kept coming back every weekend. He gave me his phone number. The next thing you know, like, he started sending me boxes. Next thing you know, I was on the team. And next thing you know, here come Pepe Martinez hollering at me, telling me to come down to Washington, D.C. He just kind of basically brought me under his wing. So I was happy. All from Freddie. Me and Fred like the same age. He was always the young East Coast killer. If he didn't bring Jeff Payne to Love Park that time, I don't agree. I don't think I would have got sponsored. That memory is stuck in my head like, like a favorite song. Like, I love those dudes and, and honor and respect those dudes for that, man, straight up. We was, we was on, I think, Girl and Chocolate Tour. And we were skating somewhere in Europe. You know, just skating through whatever type of streets. And like, oh, we gonna go cut up here. And I'm like, not the first one, but like the second one. You know, you pop your board up, you start walking. We walking up the hill. And I walk up, and I see like 15 skinheads, laced boots, Doc Martens. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, I just started running down the hill. And they chased us for a while. Like, it was crazy. I swear I felt like a whole army was fucking chasing me, though. It was like one of the most scariest things. Looking over my shoulders, looking for Nazis. I'm fresh out of Philly kind of at that time, exploring the world. Like, the last thing that I want to see is like a group of Nazis, you know what I mean, chasing me down the street. Rick Howard, Mike Carroll, they pulled me straight from the hood. I was like on my last dying leg. And I always have the utmost respect for Rick Howard and Mike Carroll for taking that chance. It really, really, really meant the whole lot for me, for them two icons to put their neck on the shoulder to say, we're gonna sponsor badass Stevie Williams. And we're gonna back him. It was probably one of the hardest things I probably have ever had to do. I didn't know anything. I just know I was making 300,000 a year. I was already in a penthouse, I already had an S600. I was high, like I was high off life. The only reason why I left is because my partner Troy gave me a dope plan, believed in what I could do because I didn't even believe in DGK. I had a dope deal on the table. 
with being a partner within the distribution company KO, even though I didn't know shit about anything. But I believed in my partner Troy at that time that he could help me run a company. People started talking a lot of shit about me leaving chocolate and me not keeping it real. Everybody kind of turned their back on me. And the only thing I was left with was my partners. Remember before I skated for Girl in Chocolate, nobody fucked with Stevie anyway. And I'm skating for Girl in Chocolate. Now y'all fuck with me, but as soon as I don't skate for Girl in Chocolate anymore, no y'all don't fuck with me no more. That hurted me more than a lot of different things. I didn't go through a depression, but I went through more of a like, well, where's my essence lie? And it really lies in my video parts and the things that I do and the things that I believe in. I'm psyched, I still got my partner. I got the respect from Rick and Mike. I told them all the time I apologize for leaving. And Rick told me out of his own mouth a lot of good words that helped me keep believing in what I'm doing now. As long as I got the respect from my peers that I wanted the respect for the right way from my heart, man, I, I love it, man. And, and I know I'm doing the right thing. And that's what I pride myself on. If he ever seen this, I hope like when he sees me in the back of his head, he's thinking in the back of my head, I'm, I might smack the shit out of him. <laughs> Just saying.